Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're going to talk about Bitcoin, and we're going to be looking at the Relative Strength Index, or RSI. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out the sale on Into the Cryptoverse Premium at intothecryptoverse.com. Let's go ahead and jump in. Now, before getting into the charts, I'd like to discuss a couple orders of business. The first of which is that we are having the annual Into the Cryptoverse Bracket Challenge for those who follow the NCAA tournament. And the winner of the Bracket Challenge will get a one-year subscription to ITC Premium. So if you want to fill out a bracket and join the Into the Cryptoverse group, make sure you do so. Link to that is in either the description below and or the pinned comment. So please be sure to check that out. Second thing is that I will be going to the Bitcoin conference in Las Vegas. And I've basically been the last three years in a row. I always enjoy going. I always enjoy meeting a lot of you guys. Uh, so I'm excited to see uh, who all is going to be there. Let's go ahead and jump into the charts. And we'll talk about this. Because I, you know, as I've said before, the weekly RSI, the, the monthly RSI, all this stuff is great. But I do think the RSI is best used in confluence with other indicators rather than by itself. And I'll give you a reason why, and then we'll talk more about what I what I actually want to use the RSI to discuss in this video. Technically, you know, the way the RSI works is that people say below 30, it's oversold, and then above 70, it's overbought. Now, there are some similarities with this and the fear and greed index, meaning that if you only use the RSI, the weekly RSI by itself, to buy and sell, you might not, it might not work out that great. In fact, it's been a lot better using this to buy Bitcoin rather than to sell Bitcoin. For instance, if you bought Bitcoin in recent years, right, anytime the weekly RSI went below 30, that's been a pretty good time to buy. Now, it hasn't always been the bottom. For instance, last cycle in June, we saw the weekly RSI go below 30, and in fact, it was not actually the bottom, but it was relatively close. It was relatively close. On the other hand, if you waited for the weekly RSI to hit, say, 90 to sell, well, that sometimes works out and sometimes it does not. For instance, in December 2017, it would have it worked out very well, but... It also hit that same level in June of 2017. Now, there's also a period over here in 2013 where it went well above 90. It was not actually the top. In 2011 and 2010, there are plenty weekly RSIs above 90, and it was not actually at the top. Last cycle in 2021, we can see that the weekly RSI first crossed 90 in December of 2020, so sort of like the fear and greed index, had you sold all your Bitcoin the minute the weekly RSI hit that level, you would have sold it all at around 40k or so before then watching the price of Bitcoin go all the way almost all, all the way up to almost 70k a little less than a year later. So I almost prefer to use the RSI at least on the weekly time frame near lows rather than at near highs. Now in the 2016 cycle. One way to make it so that that point was actually useful was to say as long as after that correction, the weekly RSI found support at 53, then the, the rally could ultimately continue. You'll notice that in 2016, 2017, every time that Bitcoin had a correction, the weekly RSI ultimately bottomed out at around 53. Eventually, it broke. And once it broke, it meant the cycle was over. Okay, it meant the cycle was over. You could argue there's a similar level this cycle, but instead of a weekly RSI of 53, it's a weekly RSI of 44. And we went to 44 in September of 2023, and then we went down to 44 in September of 2024. Now we're at a weekly RSI of 44, even though it's March, right? So it was September, September, and then March. In 2016, 2017, it was February, August, March, and July. So this cycle 
the timing of things has certainly played out somewhat differently. In fact, in the 2017 cycle, there was actually a pullback in early 2017 where the price of Bitcoin dropped back down about 35% to the 2016 high. You'll notice that a 35% drop from the high would actually put Bitcoin right around the 2024 high, right around that 70K level, 70, 73K. That's where it would put it. Now, the main difference so far, because there has been a deviation here, the main difference between the 2016, 2017 cycle and what we're seeing right now is that in 2016, there was a drop in January, and then there was also a drop in March. But it was risk on in February, right? February was actually risk on, while January and March were risk off. This cycle, we got sort of the risk off time in late January, and also in February, and oh, by the way, also in March. So back then, Bitcoin found strength in February, so that by the time it got another correction in March, it was a higher low. This cycle, there was not really any strength in February, and so the March pullback is actually a lower low than compared to what we got back in January and, say, early February, because there just simply was not a, a risk on time really in February. So it goes back to the idea of, like, just because you hit a weekly RSI at a support level doesn't mean that the price can't go lower. For instance, the weekly RSI in July went down to 45 and then a few months later, in September, it went back down to 44, 45 again, but the price was ultimately lower. You see, that, you see what I'm talking about there? How the, 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 the weekly RSI basically stayed constant, but the price of Bitcoin continued to go lower. So again, it's better off not to use this in a vacuum. Uh, but what I would suggest is that there's been a lot of discussions this cycle about cycle theory and monetary policies, monetary policy theory, monetary policy views on the cycle. And structurally there's been no denying there have been similarities between this cycle and the 2016 2017 cycle right there's sort of a weekly rsi support level that bitcoin continues to try to hold support at if it breaks it's possible that it means the cycle is over okay it's possible that it ultimately means that and that's a reality that everyone has to ultimately accept there's also another view here that would maybe bring in the monetary policy view into question. Because if you actually extend this weekly RSI support level, you'll see that it also found support at that same level in 2019. And then we actually got a recession, and then ultimately there was another rally later on. So some of the times when I, and I look at, at the charts for, for Bitcoin, I find similarities with the 2016, 2017 view structurally Right? You, you, know, you, you basically just sort of slowly go up and then build out a base and then slowly go up and then build out a base. Kind of like this cycle, right? You go up and you build out a base, you go up and then you build out a base. There's been a lot of similarities between that. Whereas in the 2019 cycle, we didn't really do that, right? We just went up and then the market dropped for a while. Okay? Um, and then ultimately it went up and then built out a base and then, and then took off. But all of that, right, of actually building out this longer base right here, that occurred after the weekly RSI broke down and after there was actually a pandemic induced recession. We also had an inverted yield curve back then. And this is, this kind of goes back to what we've talked about before is that every cycle, every time we get an inverted yield curve, people say this time is different. And then ultimately there ends up being a reason for why it ends up not being different. And of course the narratives are already running this cycle, but you could argue that it's going to happen no matter what the bigger, the bigger question is timing it and, you know, knowing exactly when it's going to happen. Is, is sort of the question that I think we should be asking ourselves, not so much, you know, is this time different? It's more so just when is that part of the cycle going to ultimately play out? One of the reasons why I have found similarities between the 2016 cycle and this cycle is because of the structure of the market has been similar. But one of the reasons why I've talked more so uh, recently about monetary policy view is because a lot of people have started to really notice that this cycle feels a lot different than last cycle. And there's a reason for that. There's actually a good reason for that. Last cycle, when the market was going up through here, it was during quantitative easing, where the balance sheet of the Fed was going up. 
During 2018-2019, the balance sheet of the Fed was going down, and all Bitcoin pairs were bleeding, which ultimately led into this area. Okay, so we've noticed the same thing this cycle, where the the balance sheet of the Fed has been declining, and it feels like the market's not really doing that well, despite the fact that Bitcoin has done very well over the last few years. And the reason is because ETH is at eighteen hundred bucks, right? I mean. ETH was also, the last time ETH was at 1800 uh, back when, you know, back in 2022, I mean, that wasn't the last time it was there, but you can think back to when ETH was at about 1800 in 2022, the price of Bitcoin was like, I don't know, like 20K, 20-25K. Now, the price of Bitcoin is basically four times that, and the price of ETH is the same. This is why we talk so much about Bitcoin dominance, right, and and how Basically, the entire asset class can bleed back to Bitcoin until there's a pivot by monetary policy. Now, we're about to have another FOMC meeting, so we will see what Powell has to say. Um, but so far, they have not given, uh, they have not said that quantitative tightening is over yet. And the median view, as per the last FOMC minutes, is that it won't end until sort of the mid midpoint of the year. It's possible that this recent correction in risk assets will change their mind. Uh, but we just simply have to wait and see what they want to say. So I would argue that if the weekly RSI here holds as support, then it might just be sort of the 2017 correction where Bitcoin basically tests the 2024 high. It's just taking longer this cycle uh, because there wasn't actually a risk on period in February. So it ends up being a lower low. Where I would more so defer to the monetary policy view would be if this breaks down. Because again, this also broke down in November of 2019, a couple of months after the Fed ended quantitative tightening. And it bounced the month that the Fed did in quantitative tightening. So that, I, I think, is, is the argument to look at here is that, you know, structurally, there's been plenty of similarities to 2016, 2017. Monetary policy, there's been more similarities with 2019, 2020, when the advanced decline index of the top 100 cryptocurrencies was going down, right? When when more assets in the cryptoverse were going down than going up, and it was mostly due to a few going up that were responsible for total market cap going up. Whereas a lot of altcoins are basically where they were two years ago, and they haven't really moved a whole lot. That's that 2019 monetary policy view playing a role. Because you could argue that if the Fed were not decreasing their balance sheet, and that it, if, if it had instead been flat like it was in 2017, then perhaps this cycle would feel a lot different. Perhaps altcoins would have been keeping pace with Bitcoin better. But that's not been the case, right? We've been in quantitative tightening. And remember, I'm going to work it in. Remember, last cycle, when quantitative tightening was going on, Bitcoin dominance was going up. Right, and that, that's sort of the important point is that it wasn't until QT ended and really QE began that Bitcoin dominance, this purple line, actually topped out. And that's the thing that just continues to go up this cycle. So again, structurally, it's been similar to 2016, 2017 so far. If the weekly RSI breaks down below 44, then I, I think you really start to argue you're going more so into the monetary policy view where the Fed's going to try to come to the rescue at some point, and, and hopefully they haven't done too much damage, um, you know, to sort of repair things. I think the bigger issue for the Fed this cycle than in 2019, 2020, is that inflation wasn't really an issue over here, but it, it has been an issue recently, right? It's been more of an issue recently, and so they might not be as willing to support markets in the same way as quickly until it's more apparent that inflation is actually coming back down to earth and we're not going into just another inflationary wave, right? So that's the way I'm currently looking at the markets right now, uh, you know, through the lens of the weekly RSI. If this holds as support, and remember, price could go lower and it could still hold as support depending on where the weekly close is. If this holds that support, 
then the similarities between the 2016-2017 cycle are still very much intact. If it does not hold as support, meaning if Bitcoin gets sort of a weekly close below 73K, below the 2024 high, then I, I think you more so want to watch what happened over here in the 2019-2020 cycle. If this starts to break down, then there's a good chance that all Bitcoin pairs would bottom out. But that hasn't happened yet, right? There has to be weakness in the market for ultimately you to argue that there would be a substantial pivot by the Federal Reserve. And again, there has been a 10% correction by the S&P. There was also a 10% correction by the S&P in late 2023, and it didn't really change the Fed's resolve either. So, you know, we'll, we'll see what they have to say. Uh, but those are currently my views on, on that. I also wanted to at least briefly mention the, the RSI on other time frames. The two-week RSI might be a little bit better at, at timing some tops, but I'll show you how it, even that is not always as perfect. You know, the two-week RSI was great for timing that 2017 top, and it was pretty close to timing the 2021 top, but not perfect. I mean, it, it still missed it uh, by a couple of months. This cycle, the two-week RSI also hit this trend line, but it hit it back in, in March of 2024. And that's when we basically said this is likely a mid-cycle top, right? The March top is a mid-cycle top, not a market cycle top. And one of the reasons for that was basically just because this same time frame was when gold was breaking out, which also marked the mid-cycle top for Bitcoin back in, in 2019, right? So if you look at gold, you'll see that there was also a breakout by gold right here in 2019, and that more or less marked the mid-cycle top for Bitcoin. And so we were basically just arguing, well, what if this is, you know, what if this is the sort of the similar idea where you have gold, um, you know, breaking out, and, and then as it breaks out here, that ends up being sort of a mid-cycle top uh, for Bitcoin. Again, it, it doesn't really look that great because we're looking at it on a two-week time frame. But if I were to switch this over to, say, like a three-day um you can see that when gold broke out from the prior high right here, that's ultimately what marked the mid-cycle top for Bitcoin USD. But anyways, guys, those are my views on the relative strength index for Bitcoin. Again, I don't really think it should be used by itself in a vacuum. I think it's better used as confluence with other indicators because I, I do think there are some issues with only using the RSI to navigate Bitcoin. It can give you some signals that necessarily aren't that great, especially when the market is is, is going up. Probably better off used at, at lows and finding structural support levels in market cycles rather than trying to time tops exactly. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up. But again, check out the sale on Into the Cryptoverse Premium at intothecryptoverse.com. Again, remember to check out the annual ITC Bracket Challenge. Links in the description below. And also, I hope to see a lot of you guys at the conference in Las Vegas in May. We'll wrap it up. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.